This is Edward Moran from Cinema Daily US. And today we're interviewing Marcus Dunstan, who is the uh, director of a new film in the horror genre, Unhuman by Blumberg TV and Epic Pictures that'll have its debut on June 3rd. Welcome, Marcus, how are you? I'm grateful, how are you, sir? Good, you must have had a horrible high school experience. <laughs> well, I had, I think I had a typical high school experience. It just yeah. happened to be a little bit horrifying. <laughs> I loved your phrase, combustible adolescence. That you mentioned oh, in the press. You. So tell me, uh, was the film based on real life events or your imagination? Well, Every character is based on somebody. I, I like my parents are in the movie. My mom uh, was a principal. My dad, uh, a, a doctor professor, and even my fifth grade teacher and her husband, uh, who was a coach, are in this movie. Uh, and it, and it, I wanted to go back to that period of vulnerability, of hopes, of horrors, and whatnot, and and leave some things there, uh, and also bring back. Uh, a hug for for other folks so if if the scarier things in life don't have to teach us to be afraid sometimes by going through them they teach us not to fear anything well that's certainly something that i saw in the film that all the characters seem to have moved forward in their lives yes and that you know isn't that isn't that the almost subtle not even subtle goal but it's almost the result of high school is like all right you can be stuck in this moment this first crush, this first fight, this first defeat, this first victory, you can stay there. But on the other side of this is this thing called the rest of your life. And the lessons instilled, the hopes and whatnot can be there to help you or hold you back. Now, you said that you're debtor to John Hughes and Stephen King. Will you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, John Hughes is directly referenced throughout in the sense that the high school is Evanston Hill. Evanston was the setting for some of his uh, marvelous stories. Um, and Hill is based on like the actual high school he went to, Stephen King. And so, but with the John Hughes sentiment is, though the John Hughes universe didn't talk down, didn't talk over the heads. It, it seemed to have this wonderful ability to speak directly to the epicenter of adolescence and, and do it respectfully. And even, even if it did tee up a stereotype, you would find the heart of that person in this moment of unexpected vulnerability. And it, 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 it just it resonates throughout life. I think some of his, some of John Hughes filmmaking is, is as profound today as it was upon first viewing. Um, for example, one that I cite from Planes, Trains and Automobiles is John Candy having been doled out a dressing down by Steve Martin simply says with absolute you know moistening eyes i like me and in that you're like oh isn't that the goal as we face ourselves every day in the mirror can you say that can you believe it can you stand by it it's it's wonderful and it's a, it's a slogan for you know trying to be the best of ourselves so then stephen king stephen king what i loved is he he had a uh, an ability like that was roger ebert's reviews for the chicago sun times and stephen king were my late night reading when I was a kid as I drift off to sleep. And they they taught me everything I know about writing or, or what to pursue. And, you know, Roger Ebert would in, inspire me to watch movies that I, I would have to uh, seek far and wide sometimes to see, but would always educate. And Stephen King found a way where I knew I liked the scary movie, but boy, I liked it more from him. Why? Well, I liked it because Wait, that's a that's a job I can relate to, or that's a task, or that's a that's a type of person. They they sound a little more like like someone I know. There, there's an identifiable. It's not he didn't write in in one note. He had fully fleshed out people with lives that were under duress or hardship or whatnot, or would have had just enough time being uh, in a drama, but then the harm element would come along, exacerbate it, and become a uh, a catalyst to tell a story that could resonate with any and all yeah and in looking at the film um which i did yesterday thank you i real, realized that um, despite all the mayhem and the bloodshed there's really some human stories there and i'm particularly interested in the character of ever yes I, th is, I think i think it's really her story oh absolutely it is she's the epicenter um and if and if every uh character was kind of representing a a a relation to an element of production 
Brianne's character ever is the camera within the movie, the observer, someone who is seeking a push inside to define herself somewhere. Where should I go? I know I'm smart. I know I have heart. I know I care. I know I put everyone before me. I know I, I have this. I know I can be something. What, 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 what should I be? What should I be? I just don't want to be nothing. And then the horror movie comes along and says, like, guess what? You can be anything. Well, you said in your statement, this is a horror movie. So if these students aren't willing to become the best of themselves to survive, they just might devolve into a flesh craving monster or get yes. eaten outright. Yeah. Yes. And that you know, and isn't that life? <laughs> if we don't if we don't triumph in our if for the good, we are aligned with the wrong. So what is your next project? Uh, are you still, are you making films in this genre? Oh, I, I, I hope, I, I really love uh, horror and uh, currently we're collaborating once again with Blumhouse and um, I, I hope that that is, uh, we'll be able to uh, interview about that at some point upon its uh, creation. Um, but I, I just, I really, I owe, I owe Blumhouse the world. You know, they, they allow people to uh, invite experience and, and, and really, you know, through horror and hope, through to, cre to create betterment, like you, you just have a chance to do this. And I, and I, yeah, I'm eternally grateful for it. So I think uh, if we, if we do our jobs right, we're going to help somebody. Right, and especially in this moment, when high school or schools are the epicenter for a lot of violence, I think. Yes. That, I think it speaks to the loner. You know, there, there are. Do you, do you think your characters are loners, basically? uh outliers for sure outliers yes uh because like the idea of the loner is like no everybody in this has a friend it has a group has a as something and then the friendship at the core of it is between ever and her friend and that's the one that's fracturing creating you know right. uh, a rift that could yeah. take them both down um and so it's it's nice that you know that we need you know everybody can have their own multiple uh, layers and whatnot in, in their experience, but our friends are a reflection of us. And that's, an, a, that's a vital and important uh, way to begin. They're the, they're the family we choose. I love that quote. And they're the folks that get us through when everything, anybody can have fun at a party. Your friends are there far after it's over. Well, and certainly it's a, it's a I, was, I was remarking on the, friendships involved everybody did there were scenes as i said be, beyond the mayhem and the violence there were tender moments of friendship and caring for <laughs> each other and that came through too well is, is i think our time is just about up is there anything else you'd like to say as we move forward oh uh how about thank you for uh for watching unhuman and thank you for helping get the word out um we're thrilled with it we we hope that uh this this movie can give some folks who are at that vulnerable point in their lives um, hope over horror. Hope over horror. Well, that's a good way to end. Thank you. We were just talking with Marcus Dunstan. This is Ed Moran from Cinema Daily US. And uh, thank you very much, Marcus, and good luck thank on you. your project. Thank Absolutely. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye.